Innovation is one of those topics that is often fantasized about because we all hope that it'll make us a lot of money and solve a whole lot of problems. But like most things in life, unless you really understand it, unless you really know how to apply it, it may not deliver those results. I believe that one of the levers that we have to pull to be able to change the trajectory of our continent's development is really around education and skills. Even as a for-profit business, we understand that we only win when everyone we touch across our journey wins with us. The biggest industry to be involved in today, if you want to remain relevant, if you want to generate sustainable profit, is to help the world spin a little faster in the right direction. The age of sustainably achieving profits by simply making money out of other people is fast disappearing into the distance. It is no longer sufficient to score singular wins. The new economy demands that we use innovation and new products and solutions to create shared value, where you make money with your customers, even for your customers. In this new world, salespeople, entrepreneurs, leaders have to lift their horizons to see right across the value chain and establish a line of sight with an outcome that leaves everyone substantially better off. To achieve sustainable profits in the future, we need to solve significant socio-economic challenges and problems using innovation to win with others. So how do we get to this point of sustainable profit and impact? My formula for this today is that it starts with innovation, meaningful, contextually relevant innovation that solves the real problem that you have lived, plus a capacity for shared value, where you create value beyond yourself. And finally, execution, the ability to get stuff done so that good thinking doesn't go to waste. The best innovations don't come from some mechanical or academic approach at all. It's much more organic than that. And it starts with the things that you're naturally interested in, the things that you are genuinely sort of connected to and drawn to. And the key question we all need to be asking ourselves is, is there an authentic connection? Because that authentic connection is the thing that enables you to see deep into an issue or a problem. So tapping into your ability to think more creatively and more entrepreneurially starts with tapping into those things that you notice without tossing them out as silly, distracting ideas. This way of thinking is really, really powerful because it means that your capacity for innovation is not limited to the things that you studied, but rather connected to the journey and life that you have walked. So you see, your distinguishing factor in your capacity for innovation is in how you see the world. And your unique perspective in life has created that for you. I believe that the world remains deficient in African perspectives. We haven't manifested our perspectives in enough products and services out there in the world. And I believe that we haven't done that because we haven't trusted in the validity, in the legitimacy of our point of view. I always find it stunning that the guys from Airbnb put an air mattress in their lounge and had the audacity to believe that people would want to participate in that. I believe this is the primary source of competitive advantage today. Your perspective, you are the innovation. Ask yourself, what do you have the potential to offer that is so unique and compelling, that is so helpful, that no computer can replace you, that no one can outsource you? Figure that out, master that one thing, and you'll be further along the journey than most people. Creating shared value works best when we create money with and for our customers. And the best businesses have created these middlemen that allow them to do just that. It isn't just the cool tech that got Uber and Airbnb out there, it's the fact that they created a sustainable income channel for so many people. They didn't just charge a subscription fee so that you get on that platform, they took the risk with you. They only win when you win, and obviously their customers want to win, so they win too. The market today is also showing us 
that, the, that people are hungry for things that are inclusive and show positive change, and that we want to be part of something bigger. So Nielsen's study said to us that 73% of people will pay for goods that are more sustainable, and 56% will pay more for a product that is produced by a socially relevant company. So the market is highly responsive and wants to contribute where things are working and counteract where it is not. Creating shared value is powerful because it allows you to leverage public sentiment. It allows you to raise more awareness, get more attention, and ultimately more customers. Winning with others is the fastest way to grow your enterprise today. This brings me to the final point around execution, the art of getting stuff done. Everyone has awesome ideas, but most people don't get started and even fewer finish. A lot of people get stuck in that beginning phase, sitting with that idea and trying to imagine the very end. And that big, hairy, audacious goal seems far too overwhelming, and you don't get started. The reality is that there's actually a couple of very real and scientific reasons why. The first thing is that the human mind is limited in its capacity to connect dots into the future. So when you're sitting at the start of something and you're trying to project it into the future and what it comes out as, your mind is trying to draw a linear line where there actually isn't, because creation is far more dynamic. And the most important thing I've learned as an entrepreneur is that it's a journey, and there's no defining moments of success, there's no defining moments of failure, it's a series of moments strung together by something called time. And the most important thing that you can do is to keep walking, to take that next step, which gives you data and market feedback from your customers, your staff, your partners, which informs your next step. And that's how you keep on going. If you don't take any action, if you don't get any data points, you don't start moving in the direction that actually helps you. Progress is far more evolutionary. The second reason I believe we struggle a lot with execution, we block ourselves. We have that special part in our brain where as soon as we get that instinct, it seeks to protect you from anything that's crazy and all it knows that's safe and not safe. It doesn't know maybe or perhaps or but or if or some bit of gray. And in that phase, we could get easily quite stuck. And the reality is that when you get that instinct, you will never feel like it's a good thing to try. You will never feel that you're smart enough or experienced enough or ready, or you have enough resources or whatever your brain tells you. Mel Robbins talks a great deal about this, listening to those little voices. She talks about developing the skill. And she uses the word skill because it's something that you work on, the skill of acting on your instincts. You've got five seconds to make it happen. And you, when you get that instinct, you've got to count down from five by saying five, four, three, two, one, and then move. Get up, make that call, call that customer, speak to your boss, your peer, send that email, move and take some action before your brain shuts it down and kills your instincts. So this little trick is pretty key to help you shift from being the kind of person that thinks about doing something to someone that actually does something. To get out of this knowledge action gap where you know what to do, but you can't actually bring yourself to do it. The ability to turn innovation into profit, the ability to execute, comes down to a series of five second decisions over years. So the three questions or the few questions I want you to keep in your mind as you leave today is, am I being inquisitive? Am I observing? Am I noticing? Am I unearthing my most authentic and unique perspective? Am I driving shared value? Am I acting on my deepest and truest instincts? And can you tell that I have done so by looking at the work that I have done? Thank you very much.